Um, I'm going to tell you a story now that is very out of character for me. So it's a story about a trip I took about 10 years ago down to sub-Saharan Africa. Um, at the time, a large foundation planned a trip with different people or scientists from different areas with the idea is, can we give a new approach to HIV at the time? So we went down. The day before I went, I actually went to a lecture that I wouldn't have gone to otherwise at our university. And it was talking about HIV in the United States versus Sub-Saharan Africa. In the United States, HIV is a disease that is transmitted predominantly through homosexual sex, through intravenous drug abuse, and through transfusions. There certainly are other means of transmission, but they are the dominant ones in the United States. Whereas in Africa, almost all uh, uh, transmission is heterosexual sex transmission. So the scientist was talking about differences in virus how geographically there's been evolution differently in sub-Saharan Africa versus the United States. And this was actually an area of which there were many meetings that year talking about various proteins in the virus that could affect uh, affinity for various cells that could cause uh, transmission in different ways. So the question was, was it a different strain of the virus? And there were a lot of sequence differences that existed and they were hypothesizing. So we go to the next slide. When we went down there, the first thing we did was we walked around the village and went into one of the local markets. And in the market, on the table there, there were all these little vials. So on one side was a vial of a powder that was alum. Well, alum is the ingredient in antiperspirant. The other were um, vials of leaves. And when you asked what they were for, the answer was they were for sex. And we'll go to the next slide. So it turns out that in sub-Saharan Africa, men like dry sex. And so women have uh, 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 acquiesced to that. And if you look and talk to women in Zimbabwe, 93% of them participate in dry sex. Women in Zambia, 86%. In Zaire, there are 30 different substances sold at the local market to affect dry sex. And so there are things like small stones that you buy in a little vial that women put in prior to intercourse that inhibits secretion. Newspaper, they put, inter, they put a, a newspaper in their vagina for an hour prior to sex and that inhibits secretion by the vagina so they get dry sex. We go to the next slide. So there's the perception in Sub-Saharan Africa that an overly wet partner is promiscuous and there's a risk of being abandoned and going to another mate. And so that's why most of the women do it. So if you look at countries of which dry sex is prevalent, they're the highest HIV prevalence of all of the countries. So this notion in the United States scientists that we have been studying that it's a different virus was totally wrong. Those scientists had never gone to a table in a market and seen the little vials there of the leaves and uh, of the stones and of the alum. And so my message now is that all of us who are scientists, who are working in a laboratory, who are seeing patients, we need to go back and forth. You need to see the disease. You need to experience what we're talking about. And over and over, we hear talks, myself included, where we talk, have scientists who talk about things, but they've never actually seen or experienced the disease. And there's something to experience. So thank you.